Okay, what we're looking at is a Tektronix T932 35 megahertz dual trace scope. This was a very popular scope in its day, still quite popular on eBay. Uh, nice looking, uh, portable, doesn't take up a whole lot of bench room. It's a little bit on the deep side, but compared to most scopes, not much more. Um, has a nice uh, trace on it. It's in good shape. Case is in good shape. A little bit of a shine on it. Um, very few scratches, bangs, mars, any, any such a thing like that. A little nick here on the corner. Somebody banged it. Same thing here. You can see the corner's been dented just a little bit. A little big harm. Same on this side. Slight discoloration from some kind of a sticker that used to be here. Good stand. Bottom's in good shape. And then the rear. The rear's in good shape. We have an input back here for Z-axis. Well, now you probably wonder, what the heck am I doing? But uh, I've taken the cabinet off of the T932 and uh, gave the thing a, a cleaning, as you can see from my rag here. Uh, wiped out a lot of the uh, carbon residue from the interior that that would come up some of it is stained uh, on the inside won't come up but uh, but that's okay at least we've got anything that's loose off of there anything that's left is more like a varnish at this point um, but the interior is very nice looking there isn't uh, anything observable that uh, that I have seen that gives me any indication of, of any internal damage. No smoky residues, no leaky capacitors, uh, broken uh, controls, anything like that. So I thought I'd give you guys a good look, so at least you have an idea what it looks like on the inside. Workmanship on this is very good. The board's quality is, is good. It's a fiberglass, uh, most of them are fiberglass boards in here. In fact, I think all of them are. And um, while I have it out, I'm going to just check a couple of things. Uh, maybe the DC balance here, make sure that we have that adjusted. Okay, we're going to. So. Um, we're going to put this thing through uh, some tests. Uh, right at the moment, let me let me turn the light out. We'll get a little bit better view of it here, maybe. Yeah. And we'll... Uh, what you're looking at is not one trace, that's two traces superimposed over top of each other. Um, I did it this way because it's going to be easier to, dis to um, display to you that uh, they're calibrated and they're tracking each other well and uh, they perform basically the same way. I'll, uh, I can show you that I'm telling you the truth here by just killing one of the traces. There we go. And back to superimposed. Um, we can take it from no intensity at all to full intensity, more than it needs. About like so, I believe, would be good. We have focus, blur, sharp, very blurred, back to sharp again. Okay. And um, right now we're feeding in a one megahertz signal. 
Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. I have a uh, I have a B and K 100 megahertz 1590 here warming up in the on the side. And as right now we are on the half volt per uh, division range, and uh, we are getting 10 division or excuse me eight divisions, four up, four down. So it'd be uh, uh, eight times a half would be four volts peak to peak, two volts peak. And um, and we have one division per centimeter on the uh, one microsecond trace, uh, horizontal trace. Now we'll connect ourselves back up here just to compare. And there's a one microsecond trace. And what we see is we see one full cycle per division, which is what it should be. So uh, we're getting uh, one cycle of a one megahertz trace uh, per, for every division, 10 divisions across. And we are seeing one, two, three, four divisions, eight divisions up. So that's four volts peak to peak again, two volts uh, peak. So it's reading the same as the B and K. That's really the point. Um, let's go ahead and we can look at channel one. We can look at channel two. We can look at both together. We can kill channel two. We'll look at channel one again. Look at channel two. Let's kill channel one. Display two. Display both. So we just took you through all of that. Um, we are right now in one microsecond per division. If we go to to uh, 0.1 microsecond per, uh, per division, then we see one full cycle in the 10 divisions, which is what we'd expect. And if I was to change the level here. There we go. You can see it's one full cycle in 10. Now let's go ahead and just uh, run her up uh, in frequency. Let's go to 10. Okay, right now we're reading about 5 megahertz on the screen and we see ourselves going the entire uh, uh, 4 volts peak or 8 volts peak to peak and if we, uh, as we turn our frequency up, if we see ourselves fall to 70.7% um, uh, uh, of that, of what we're measuring here now, which would be about 2.8 volts peak, then uh, we've hit our 3 dB point. So let's just see where that 3 dB point is. Uh, we're supposed to be rated at 35 megahertz, so right now I'm going to go to 10. This will be, this will be 15 megahertz. All right, I'm going to add another 10. Here will be 25. Now we did fall a little bit here, but we are still well above uh, 2.8. Let's go to 35, which is rated. And right now we are reading uh, approximately 2.9 to 3 divisions up and down. So we're just a, a shade better than 2.8 up and down, which would be the uh, 3 dB point. So channel A passes as far as its bandwidth goes, is where we're rated. A little better than actually. Let's check channel 2. Alright, there's the 5 megahertz on channel 2, and we are traversing the entire 8 volts peak. Here's uh, 15 megahertz, 25, 35. And once again, we're up about three divisions and down three divisions. So we're a little bit better than 35 megahertz band width uh, on both channels. So we pass. Okay, just going to show you that the calibration point works. I've got uh, my probe ready. 
and we're on the calibration point and we can see that we we do indeed get the signal as we'd expect to get. So you can calibrate your probes. Alright, we're on uh, channel one, um, our left channel, and we are um, inputting uh, this would be we're on 20 millivolts per division and uh, we we have 80 millivolts coming in right now so we are maxed out four divisions it's this DC that we're looking at now if I turn my uh, voltage down 70 60 50 40 35 or 30 20 10 0 as expected so let's go ahead and move ourselves to channel 2 okay we're on channel 2 now and let's take her up from Let's see, we have to go to channel 2 and make sure we're still zeroed. Okay. Here's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80. Okay. Let's uh, let's go one volt per division. Okay. There's one, two, three, four. It's on channel two. Let's move to one. Okay. Here we go. Let's go one, two, three, four. So as you can see, um, we're responding to the DC accurately. Um, the unit is in uh, pretty good functional order. It uh, has a nice bright display. It's in uh, good shape looks wise. It will be a very nice uh, 35, millim 35 megahertz scope for somebody, dual tray scope for their bench. So I wish you luck. Uh, I will provide you with a, um, a brand new set of um, scope um, uh, test probes. And uh, there'll be the standard uh, one and times one times ten switchable um, oscilloscope probes, and uh, you'll also get a manual with this. I'll make sure you have a good manual. So happy bidding, and uh, thanks for listening.